hey guys welcome or welcome back to my youtube channel my name is marion and in this tutorial i am going to show you how to crochet this white mini skirt uh you can use your preferred yarn i'm using robin it's a hundred percent acrylic i will be doubling my strands to achieve medium weight because this one is very very thin stick around until the end of the video to uh, get to know how many balls of this i used this one is 50 grams i'm sure it's, it's indicated somewhere it's 50 grams um you also need your tape measure to make to take your waist measurements your hips and then the length of the skirt you will use a few stitch markers here and there to mark your stitches you also need your yarn needle to weave in ends i am using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and uh, you also need a pair of scissors so without wasting so much time let's just start to begin you're going to make a slip knot and chain 10 we are we are starting with a waistband so chain 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then add one and this one is acting as the turning chain so you will go into the next into the second chain and work a single crochet work single crochets until you get to the end of the chain and by the end of the chain you should have 10 single crochets now to work this um part of the skirt we are going to to use single crochets in the back loop only so once you're done with your 10 uh, single crochets you will chain one turn your work and then go into the next into the very first uh stitch and in the back loop only you will you see these two loops you will go into the back loop only and work a single crochet so continue working these single crochets in the back loop only and at the end of this you should have 10 single crochets remember we are working the waistband So I'm coming towards the end of this row. What you're going to do is work in that back last back loop, chain one and turn your work. Now we are going to continue working in the back loop only even on this row and all the coming rows. And you will work this part until you attain your waist measurements when stretched. Another way you can measure this waist measurement is that you will just put your work against your body and give it a little bit of a stretch and once you're satisfied with the coverage, that is when you can now stop. So I'm going to go offline and work this part and I'll come back and tell you how many rows I did for my size. I've gone ahead to do a total of 80 rows and if I measure this it's giving me around 20 inches but if I give it a stretch it stretches up to around 27 28 inches my waist size is 26 and a half so if you're making this for yourself and you have a tape measure i encourage you to use your tape measure if you're not uh if you don't have a tape measure definitely uh you will put it against your body and just give it a stretch and see and make sure it fits you really well so after we are done with that we are going to 
we're going to connect these two together and we will be using slip stitch so chain one and go into the next and also the loop on the other side the loops on the other side go into that and pull up a loop and pull through the chain one like that so we are pulling through them all also take the loops on this side and the loops on that side pull up a loop through them all to all the way to the through the chain on your the loop on your hook so let's do that again we are we are using a slip stitch to seam Make sure you work in the very first stitch that you made that's important we don't want to be losing stitches and once you're satisfied that you're done with your seam you can actually confirm from the other side we are done and now we're going to chain one and the next part what we're going to do next is i'm going to work <coughs> A row of single crochets all around this part just to clean it off and I'll be working that on the wrong side so you will so we are placing these single crochets at the ridge and in the valley so at the ridge you will find this part go in there and work a single crochet at the valley you will find this single loop this single loop over here go in and work a single crochet so we are working single crochets all around our work at the ridge and in the valley so that the right side just is neat to look at What you're doing is that we are just placing a single crochet in each and every row. So this is how it should be looking at the right side. And this is the wrong side. So at the end of it all you should be having a total number of uh, single crochets equals to the the number of rows that you did on the waistband mine was 80 so at the end of this i should have 80 single crochets remember we are doing a single crochet in each and every stitch on each and every row Otherwise, on the ridge and on the val in the valley of each and every row. So, I know I'm coming towards the end of this part. I'm left with a few stitches. Once you get to this part, you will slip stitch on top of the chain one, chain two, and turn your work. This is what you should be having. Remember your work stretches to your waist measurement. 
Now, we are going to place a double crochet on top of each single crochet that we just did. So we'll start from this part, work a double crochet. And remember to work a double crochet, we're just yarning over, inserting our hook in the next uh, single crochet, pull up a loop, you have three on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook in your next, in the next single crochet, yarn over, you have two on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we're going to continue working this double crochets until we get to this part where we just started from. I am about to complete my row. I'm left with just two stitches. So you work that and the next one. So after this, we ought to go in here on top of the chain two from the previous row and complete the row. But uh, if you try and open up this part, you will see that it usually gapes. So what I do, I place a double crochet right here on the slip stitch from the previous row and then I close my row. That ensures that I have, I don't have that gap in my work. Now, um, this is an increase actually. If you look at if you count your stitches very well this should be my 80th stitch but i have increased i have put another stitch over here so as we work our skirt you should put into consideration that this will will incur a few changes in your work because you're increasing a stitch over here so chain two turn your work and then go into the next stitch with no that very first stitch with a with a double crochet always start from this first one with a double crochet and do double crochets on top of each and every double crochets but now we need to start also increasing on the sides so this is how you do. You can count your stitches and get the exact half or you can just turn your work like this. Since this is where we did our, this is where we are starting from. This is where our seam is. You can just get the half of it like that. And then definitely you can happen like this. Now you know this is you you place a stitch marker over here and another stitch marker on the other side like that so when we reach here we are going to do to work an increase in this stitch and also in this stitch so let's continue working So I'm placing a single double crochet on top of each and every double crochet. But when we get to the part where we are increasing from, we will work two double crochets inside that very stitch. So I'm about to get to the point where we have marked. And I'm just two stitches away one two now you will remove your stitch marker but don't put it so far 
you work two stitches one two and then on top of that increase you will return your stitch marker to mark that that's where you will work your next increase so continue working placing a single double crochet in each and every stitch until you get to the next point of increase I have reached the point of increase so I remove my stitch marker place my two double crochets and return my stitch marker so that I know this is where I am increasing from and then continue working my double crochets until I get to the order uh, to that point where we are completing the row so right now we're just working one double crochet in each and every stitch. Once you get here, since we do not want our work to give, we will add another double crochet and then slip stitch on top of the chain two now chain two turn your work and then go into the very first double crochet because this chain two does not stitch does not count as a stitch go into the very first double crochet that you just did my stitches are a bit tight and then work a double crochet and continue working double crochets on top of the previous stitch all around so on this row we are not going to increase we will skip and then we will increase in our next row so i'm going to work this row no increase So when you get to where the stitch marker is, uh, don't forget to, don't forget, we are not increasing on this very row. So just make a, a single double crochet on top of that stitch. And then once you're done, you will take out your stitch marker and mark that very stitch because we do not want to forget it this is where we are going to place our next increase that's our point of increase we ought to mark it so um, continue working your double crochets remember we have not increased we will increase in our next row So I'm going to go all around until I get to this part. So when you get to this point, we are not increasing. So just place a single double crochet and pass. And now you will take that stitch marker and transfer it to this very uh, sing single crochet on top of it and mark that part where we will do our next increase so continue working your double crochets until you complete the row once you're done remember to place that uh, double crochet at that point and then you can now close your row 
so this is what you should be having at this point we are increasing on the sides now let me work another row with you chain two turn your work and now insert your hook and work a double crochet in that very first double crochet and continue working double crochets until you get to the increasing part where you have marked once you get to that part where you've marked remember we are placing two double crochets there so remove your stitch marker place your two double crochets and then return the, st the stitch marker so you don't forget the part and continue working double crochets so i've worked and I've, I've gotten to that point where we need to increase so i will remove my stitch marker work my two double crochets in that stitch remove return the stitch marker and then continue working a double crochet on top of each and every stitch from the previous row so now wow uh, this is the pattern we are increasing after every one row so we didn't increase here we increased on this row we have not increased on this row and we have increased on this row so continue with this pattern until when you stretch your work you can actually um, get to your hip measurement and also if you're following my pattern at this part the difference here where i'm placing an extra double crochet just before i close my row put also put that into consideration when you when you're working your piece so continue increasing my increase points are three the two on the side and this other one once you hit your hip measurements we will meet back and then i show you how i maintain my stitches from from there here i am after one two three four five i've done ten rows and i've been increasing on one two three four five i've have increased five times remember we have also been increasing on this part so um just to hide that gap that's usually around here just before you complete your row as you can see my my work is very neat and that row that gap is not visible now at this point uh, of course you have increased and and uh it fits you just put it on and make sure that your work fits you if i if i measure mine at this moment it has it's at 15 that means it's at 30 but if i stretch give it a stretch it stretches up to 18 inches this certainly is going to give me my hip measurement which is 35 and a half i mean yeah 35 and a half almost 36 so i am happy with my measurements now i am going to stop increasing so i can get rid of this um stitch markers we will no longer use them now we are going to work a row and this row we will not be increasing at all at all including this part i will show you how i am going to maintain my stitches without without leaving a gap and also without increasing so chain two and this chain two does not really count as a stitch so we go into that very first double crochet and do a double crochet so i'm going to give my work a double crochet on top of each and every double crochet and then we will meet right here as i show you how i'm going to maintain the current number of stitches until my skirt is done
So I'm left with two, just two stitches. The last stitch and the very stitch that we have been doing at this point. So now I'm going to work. Usually when we work this, when we add this, this stitch, it's usually an increase. But still, but since we want to maintain the number, the current number of stitches until the skirt is done, I'm going to work like a decrease. So to work a decrease, you will yarn over, insert your hook on top of that stitch, yarn over, pull through two, leave the two on the hook, yarn over, insert a hook at that point, yarn over, pull through two. You have three on your hook and yarn over, pull through them all. Now, this, this means that we have just one stitch. So instead of working that one stitch in here at this point and leave the gap, we work both of them together as a decrease to maintain the, the current number of stitches and also to get rid of that gap. You can see my work is completely gap free. Now I will go on and chain two, turn my work as you can see, work my first double crochet at this point and work my second double crochet on top of that very stitch that we just did and continue working double crochets on top of each and every stitch from on top of that uh, each and every stitch from the previous row until now I am at this point where we will also work the same thing. If you look at my work like this, you can actually see there's no gap and and my work is straight. The seam is very, very straight as you can see. So if you stretch your work, you can see, you can see the result of what I'm doing at the moment. I am maintaining the number of stitches and still getting rid of that gap. I really hate that gap actually. I There's a time I worked, uh, a design for a client of mine they had to return it because the gap was just too wide and they didn't want to rock the crochet without it with it so that's why i devised this method of working and removing that gap I've come towards the end of that row and as we did from the previous row, we are going to work a decrease at this point and then put a slip stitch on top of the previous of that uh, chain two. You can see my work does not have a gap at all. So the decrease is just to maintain the number of stitches that we have and to avoid increasing also because we already attained our hip measurements remember that that extra that x this this very extra uh, stitch that we were putting here so we are working a decrease at this point to counter that extra chain that we were putting and also remove the gap so if you look at your work, you should be having a very straight seam all the way from the seam that we did on the on the waistband. It should just uh, uh, go straightly up to this part that we are working at the moment. So maintain your number of stitches that you have right now and then we will meet once you have worked the desired length. Uh, my skirt is going to be 15 inches long. I don't want a very long lengthy skirt. It's just a mini skirt, 15 inches long. So let me continue working, and then once I'm back, we will count the number of st uh, the number of rows that I have worked. And then maybe you can work less those rows or more, depending on the yarn size that you're using, depending on the. Uh, the size of your hook and also depending on your preference you might be 
uh, a person that doesn't like putting on really short skirts so in that case you will work more rows so let let me work off camera and then i will meet you once i'm done and i just want to thank you for always watching my tutorials if you're new here just remember to subscribe do not forget that it helps the channel grow and ask me a question in the comment section let's have a conversation in the comment section you can also inbox me on my instagram or facebook Marion crochets i really love interacting with you guys i have a few tricks here and there that i would like to share in the course of uh, you know my tutorials so if you're a fan just please leave me a thumbs up and and let's get the conversation going. Thank you so much for watching. I went ahead to do 26 rows in total. So if you look at my work, you will notice that I have a straight seam just as I wanted it to be. And this is the right side. My work is 15 inches long. Now we are going to work the very last row and this is just to clean it off. So we are going to do a row of single crochet all around this piece. So what you're going to do, you chain one, turn your work, and then you go into each and every stitch with a single crochet starting with that first, very first one. And then place one single crochet on top of each stitch from the previous row so i'm left with just two single crochets left and you'll go on top of that chain one make a slip stitch chain one and now you can cut your yarn so at this point we are done with the body of the skirt the only part that's remaining is attaching that draw drawstring on on top of the sweater right there so we're going to make a chain long enough to wrap around our waist twice. So to, to do this, make a slip knot uh, and make a chain long enough. I am going to make around, I made around 350 chains and um, I'm going to, in, to use my yarn needle uh to help me you know insert that chain in uh on that part of the skirt so at this point you're completely done you can remove your yarn needle and just line the drawstring well and tie a knot right there and what i like to do is to tie a knot at the very end of that drawstring so that it doesn't unravel later on and then i now i can cut my the ends of that drawstring so uh, at this point we are completely done you can weave in your ends and just ensure your skirt is neat and very well presentable. 
so we are done and for this particular skirt i used a total of five balls i had five balls but this is what is left so i can say i have i used um almost 250 grams of yarn so this is me rocking my skirt and top if you want a tutorial for the top it's already uploaded i will leave a link in the description my next video is going to be uh for the crochet thigh high boots which has been requested by so many people i'm i'm going to complete that up and then i will add the link in the description thank you so much for hanging out with me my name is marion and bye